Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, I won't be here uh, the next couple of days, but uh, you guys are still having the meetings, right? Right, Dwight? We can. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, let's begin with a word of prayer. A dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful uh, for the time that we have here this morning to open your word together, uh, to continue to look at the parallels between the past and the present, and to have light for our feet. We just pray, Lord, that you can be with us throughout this day and throughout this study. We ask that your Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts and that you can guide and direct us in our lives and in this study. And we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah, I will be flying to Australia this afternoon. So I've had lots of things to do. I did have a little bit of time to think about what we studied on Thursday. And, and we did touch on some of the things. So the main thing is on Thursday, we were looking at uh, Miller's understanding of the prophetic periods and why we have the 1290 and the 1335 in the latter part of Daniel rather than uh, just the 1260 for uh, the papacy. And, of course, that, that question isn't directly told us anywhere. So it's it's kind of you have to put on your thinking caps and try to recognize what it, what this structure, what these structures are trying to say. Okay, I'm just going to read through this again. So verses five to seven and then and then start looking at, at the other verses. So when we when it says here, then I, Daniel, looked. We, we have there that 7200, which we're going to take as dealing with the symbols of Millerite history. We have 1840, 7200 is half of 14,400. So it's a symbol that relates to 144,000. It relates to the Mayan calendar, which we've already connected to uh, August 11th, 1840. And uh, behold, there stood other two, the one on this side, the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. So we have a structural chiasm. And so we say that this applies to the understanding of structural chronological chiasms in our history. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So we say that this historically is to the end of the prophetic periods from 1798 to 1844. The wonders, Pelu, Pali, however you say it, uh, relates to the wonderful number. And in our history, this is going to be 1989 to the Sunday law that's being represented. That's the parallel that we are in. Uh, I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Now, with this uh, right hand and this left hand, um, we had looked at that. And just so that was going to be, yeah, that was footnote 83. Right. So the 11,265 days from, from November 9th, 1989 to 9 11, 2020. So it gives us 9 11, 2020 in the year that July 18 happens. Right. So that's uh, what happened with that number. So that's right hand and left hand, right and left. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever. So th this swear, I, I was, um, so this is to declare an oath seven times. We should know that about, so that's what that word means, to declare an oath seven times. So that's going to bring you to 1798 and 1844 as a symbol but really you know probably what we would say is that this from 723 and 677 bc to 1798 so it's the two the two seven times that are being talked about there and they're divided into these two halves especially the one for northern israel because it's going to be four time times and then half. So that's the first half of this oath. 
right? So we can see here in the historical application, that's the first half of the oath. In our history, this is going to be the understanding of the prophetic mirror. And probably more specifically, the 2520 prophetic mirror. So we know that this then refers to the first half, the time, times and a half. So when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, it says all these things shall be finished. And we, we dealt with that for a little bit, that that's obviously not everything is finished with the end of that period. It wouldn't even be true if we applied it to the second half of the 2520 for northern Israel. So there's some things that are finished, these things. So these things are going to be finished, but there is more. So Daniel is is then going to have this next section. I heard, right, but understood not. So Daniel does not understand. And he represents the people of God in Millerite history. So what, now we say here it's the three angels' messages. So Daniel's going to hear these three angels' messages. Could we say that this relates to the sealing up of Millerite history? Or would this be the three angels' messages as expressed in the seven thunders? So we can see that there is this three angels' messages, that's Millerite history, but he's not going to understand it. And that's true in Millerite history, but in our history, these are unsealed. Maybe I should just say Millerite history. And does that make sense to people? You can see that that because um, Daniel is representing the people of God, he's representing the Millerites, right? They're going to hear, you know, John's going to hear the seven thunders. He's going to be told not to write them. They're sealed up. And I think that's kind of what's being talked about here. We're going to look at the parallel in Revelation 10. Well, maybe I don't need that because I already have that. Okay. In the seven thunders. Sealed. Uh, now I'll put here. Let's take the backwards. Okay. And then he said, oh, my Lord, what shall be the end? So we have those numbers 319, which we could relate to the 391. Um, what shall be the end of these things? Okay. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Right. So that's in our history, in our history, it's unsealed. In the seven thunders, so we can see a parallel between the book of Daniel and the seven thunders themselves. Many shall be purified, made white, and tried. So these are the three angels' messages, the repeat of the three angels' messages. Uh, but the wicked shall do wickedly. So this is going to be the separation of the two classes by the first and second angels' messages. These Parallel in November 18, 2019, and July 18, 2020. All right, so that is we put November 9th, 9, 2019 as the first day of the first month, July 18, 2020 as the tenth day of the seventh month. Okay, any other things, any comments on any of this? Hi, Stephen. So I, I think this is pretty straightforward. At this point, now what we have is, uh, so we're going to have the wicked and the wise, right? So we've already sort of addressed that. Um, but then it's going to say, from the time that the daily shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So what they're going to do is they're going to, and, and we never really think of it this way. We think about the twelve ninety, but that means that when the daily is taken away. That first period is, is, is going to be 1230 years, right? Not 1260, right? We never, I don't know if I've ever thought about that. So we're going to have this 1230, right? So there's going to be 41 months, then a month, and then 42 months. Is there any significance in that? Because the question is, why, why is it? that we have the 1290 and the 1335 and not another like a 1260 and uh, a 1305. I, I know that's kind of like a hypothetical sort of question, but is there any reason, and we did touch it on it a little bit with the 1335, that it's going to be 666 plus six, 666 plus 36 months, 
right? So it's so we have this this symbol is. But wouldn't it wouldn't it be because it, it has to deal with the daily? Okay, right. So so there are some symbols there dealing with the daily. So if we go back to the 666 years, and and I think when we look at the issue of the Great Controversy, we have a we have some symbols. We have 666. 1260 days after July 18th is 1230. Thanks for that, Iran. <laughs> So so 1230 becomes that date that uh, Jeff is going to first speak after uh, July 18th, right? It's going to be 1260 days later. It's going to be December 30th. So you get a 1230 there, which is interesting. I haven't thought about that before, so how, how that would relate as a symbol. But the point is we have these 666 years, and that, that basic symbol there is the number of man the day that man was created, the sixth day. Now, we also have the number seven, the number seven dealing with the seven times, it's the number of perfection. And when these two are in conflict with each other, it produces this number 13, right? Six plus seven is 13. And, and it's the number of rebellion. So it's the number having to do with the great controversy, with the war in heaven. And so these numbers come in conflict prophetically in this history. So we we have the seven times, this oath that is sworn seven times. And then we have this 1335, and the 1335 relates back to the 666. And I don't know if that's, you know, evident in, um, let me see if I have that chart. I have so many different charts. Okay, so, okay, so this, this is a good one. Stephen made this chart. Now, this chart has in it, uh, the 1335. So we did this when we were studying about the league with the Gibeonites. There's going to be that three days there in 1493. There's 1335 years going to 158 BC, which has three years connected to it with the 161 and the 158. And we can see that 666 times two plus three years is 1335, right? And three years is 36 months. And then you have the 666 years from 158 to 508. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And, uh, and then we're going to have the 1335 again, right? And this time we have, uh, 508 to 1843. We have the three years and the 666 times two. Now we also have 2001 as a symbol connected with it. The 158 years from 1843. To 2001, and when we have symbols of 161 years as well, tying us to the 161 BC between 1840 and 2001, 9/11, right? And the second angel arrives. So you can see here that there is this this structural connection with that 666 years tying these two 1335s together. So a simple answer to the question is is, you know, why, why the 1335? And we can just simply say because there was already 1335 years. Does that make sense? Because which comes first? Obviously, the 1335 years from 493 BC to 158 BC, those come first. And we see this also in Daniel, you know, with the 490 years. The 490 years is based on two different periods of 490 years that have already occurred. And, and we sometimes seem to think, you know, that the timelines of Daniel just sort of come from, you know, the prophetic periods just come from Daniel, that, that they're not based on anything. But we can see clearly, we know that the 70 weeks is based upon the sabbatical cycles from Leviticus 26. And the 1335 is based on something that has already occurred. The 1290 then just becomes a, a consequence of the fact that you have this 1335 years. Now, we could say, well, you, you know, we know that the, the 1335 is going to end in 1843, so it's going to start in 508. And that 508, we already have from the 666 years. And, and that comes because of that connection between Babylon and, and Rome already as a symbol. And then it's going to uh, connect pagan Rome with papal Rome. So I know that's a lot of information in the chart. Is anybody having problems with this? I mean, we have gone over this before, but you can see the main point is that 
These aren't arbitrary things that Daniel is using. They're already based on something else. And, and so he's now connecting us to this 666 years with the 1335 years. But you can see how they're already connected. And again, this is kind of remarkable too, because Miller understood the 666 years, right? And, and he used it as the starting point for the 1335. But what he didn't know was the 1335 years from the league with the Gibeonites to the league, the, to the league with the Jews. Is that making sense? Nobody has problems with this. This all makes sense, right? Okay. So I'm going to take your silence as you, you'll all understand it. Now, of course, if somebody's watching this video and they don't quite understand this, we could always make a comment. There are uh, papers that you can look at where we address this for 666 years. But but there are three periods. There's one from the captivity of Jehoiachin, which is from Leviticus 26, the siege of Jerusalem by Babylon. It's the third seven times. And then that's going to end with the d- destruction of, of the temple. So it's really dealing with the destruction of, of, of the temple in, in 70 AD, so the siege right, in 70 AD, and and that's going to be 666 years. That's the count that Ezekiel is using when he's talking about uh, in the year of Jehoiachin's captivity. So the 70 year, 70 AD is in the 666th year of Jehoiachin's captivity, the way that he's counting it. So quite amazing that, that we have that 666 years in Ezekiel. Uh, but we also have uh, this 666 years. And there is another 666 years from 128 or 129, depending on, on which date you're going to use. And that's going to go to 538. So there's another 666 years as well that kind of intertwines and connects uh, these things. But this is, this is, this is, to me is the primary one. Obviously, uh, Miller's 666 years. Now, it's an inclusive count because Miller didn't take into account there was no zero year, but it's still 666, right? You're just counting all of 158 and all of 508 to get 666 complete years. And it's going to be December uh, 25th, 508, the baptism of Clovis. So it's right near the end of that year as well. Okay, any no questions about this chart? Now, we can see one thing, of course, is in our history, we come to understand these things. So they have, so from the time that the daily is taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there should be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So that itself, the, the fact that it's 30 days difference, uh, which is, is one month as a symbol, right? So it's going to be 30 years, but they're going to, they're going to take that, that point. So they're going to take deal with the taking away of the abomination that make it desolate. So they're going to start there. So the daily sacrifice taken away, we will say, of course, this is December 25th, 508, with the baptism of Clovis. Okay, so that's what we have. The, The baptism of Clovis. And what does that connect within our history? How are we going to connect this with our history? What is what is that symbolizing the taking away of the daily in 508 with the baptism of Clovis? Is there some way in which we can parallel that with our history and our movement? So the abomination of desolation will be set up. This is going to be the start of the 1260 in 538. So we've got these two things. We've got the taking away of the daily and the setting up of the abomination of desolation. And what are we going to relate them to in our history? So we have this 30 years. Come on, guys. You can do this. I I think this is really straightforward. Okay. Can we do that? That's 30 years. Can we parallel those two 30-year periods? I mean, we could just say the 777 in that period and the 777 in our period, you know, days, right? No comments? You, nobody's got wheels turning? That might work. Okay. Can you tell me what your thought process is? Like how, how you, because I'm not, I'm not wanting to fill in all the details here. 
but we got 30 years. So can you, can you tell me how you would connect it? Because we still have the 1290 to deal with and the 1335 on how they would connect with that. We're dealing with a symbol here, right? Yes, we're dealing with the symbol because we're taking that 30 years from the time that the daily is taken away and the abomination of desolations set up. We're taking that 30 years and we're saying we have that 30 years in our history. We've already had the symbol of the 30 years, right? Now, normally we would get the 30 years from, you know, the age of a priest or things like that, right? Correct. But we can see it. It, it, it's connected to Christ when he's 30. And we also connect it to the papacy, the 30 years, we connect the 30 years of Christ to the 30 years of the papacy. We also connect it to the 30 years of Joseph because we connect Joseph and Christ already with the 30 years. We can connect the papacy as the counterfeit. Okay. So any, so I know I'm, I'm explaining it for you, but. But are we taking this as 30 literal years or 30 prophetic years? Well, we're taking it as 30 years as a symbol. We're taking the 30 years. We're not making it prophetic years. Okay. So in that, we're taking it as how many days? Well, we already have that number. It's um, the number of literal days we, we got from the story of is it Jephthah. It was uh, 10,957 days, the 30 years. So 10,957. Had... Yeah. 1957, the year in which Questions on Doctrine was released. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. I think that's the number. Yeah, that's the number. Why is it not? Show? Oh, I see. We typed it in. Put a period instead of a comma. There we go. Yeah, because we had that in the story of um, Jephthah, where we took the age of Jephthah, or not the age, the, the number for Jephthah, the Hebrew Strong's number, 3316, and the Shibboleth, 7641. When we added them together, they gave us 10,957 days. And, and we marked that from November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019. So that's that's where we first addressed this. Here you can see it here. Okay, so it's down here in the, the bottom, right? So that's where we, we got that. So we got the shibboleth, and we had all kinds of symbols there dealing with the Capricorn's constant and, and so forth. So so we've had this 30 years, and we know the number of days. Now, 1957, the, the publication of uh, Questions on Doctrine. So... Um, and we can definitely see that that is connected to our lines, right? That's the start of the fourth generation. So there's going to be these 1,290 days. Now, as far as, as placing them as, you know, whether we use these days, I, I, I don't know if we've ever counted 1290 days anywhere, particularly. We've done 1260. I've also done 1335 days, I'm trying to remember. In other words, 1335 days from December 17th, 2016 to August 13th, 2020, and that was connected to uh, Raphia, and August 13th is a symbol of Palmanai. But um, we have the year 1290, and the uh, date 18th of July, that was when the King of England expelled the Jews. Oh. And, uh, well, it was actually, it was, it was then until... It was like a period of 60 days or 144, 1,440 40 hours, I think, 60 days until they were to to be expelled. So that was when that was announced that they were to leave. And then they were given 60 days to leave. Okay. So on July 18th, 20, or 1290, Edward I issued what came to be called the Edict, edict of Expulsion, Right. That's what you're talking about. And you're saying that there was how many days? 187 days? 60 days. Oh. Until they how, had to leave. Uh, I think it was maybe, like, uh, there's maybe, it's, maybe it's a 25, 20 or something there. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, I, I, I thought we looked at it before. I just don't remember how it related to that. So I'm trying to find out. Yeah, so 60 days is 1,000. 
440 hours. But I'm not too sure if that's correct, whether it's 60 days or more than that. From what I remember, it could be like 25, 20 hours or something. So it was interesting. They say here on the Hebrew calendar, this date was a Tishba'av. That's the date that the Jews celebrate for the destruction of the temple, even though it occurs on the 10th day of the fifth month. Uh, they always celebrate the ninth day of the fifth month. Now it says here, this is in Wikipedia, it says on Ju- 18th of July, the edict of expulsion was issued some three days after parliament had gathered. The text of the edict is lost. On the Hebrew calendar, this was uh, the ninth of Av or Tishba Av, 5050 50, uh, on the, the rabbinic calendar, commemorating the fall of the temple at Jerusalem. It is unlikely to be a coincidence that's what they say. So that means they think it was purposeful. Is that what they mean? Or that God had something to do with it? Yeah. So on the biblical calendar, it's the eighth day of the fourth month. Theodore, yeah. can you can you remind me what happened in December 25th, 1991? The end of the Soviet Union. Okay. All right. That's right. Okay. See, it's a blind moment already. Yeah, it is not a blonde moment. Anyway, you guys. So, um, yeah. So, if you just want to see this here, you can see this is 1290 July 18th on the Julian calendar, of course, and it's uh, rabbinic year 5050, and it's Tish B'Av, that is the ninth of Av. I, I'm trying to figure out why the Jews celebrate the ninth of Av and not the tenth of Av. But I think it's just that that's the last day that the temple is before it's destroyed. But they they keep marking that it's because the fire doesn't start on the ninth of Av. Uh, some people try to use that argument, but that's definitely uh, I don't think that that's what um, Josephus is saying. I'm pretty sure he's marking the tenth of Av, and and the Bible never marks the ninth of Av for the first temple being destroyed. And they try to connect that to the first temple being destroyed. So we know it's Nebuchadnezzar's general breaks into the city on the 7th of Av. He starts uh, the destruction. And then on the 10th of Av, he's going to burn the temple down. So, but, but the Jews always count Tishba Av, the 9th of Av. It's the ninth day of the fifth month. But, but they're saying it's not a coincidence. And, and I don't know why they say that. Okay, so some very interesting details. So we're just going to put this as a footnote. July 18, 1290, the edict. And this is just, I'll I'll write more about it, of expulsion. Um, Okay, so we have that symbol. And that's going to connect then in our history to July 18, 2020. Equals. It connects to that date. And then you said there was a 60 days, which is 1,440 hours. Does it say how long the uh, the time is left for them to leave England? Not, not in that article. We couldn't find it. But I didn't read the entire article. So, I mean, if somebody can find that. But if it's 60 days, that's 1,440 hours. But um, So we'll leave that for now. And then it says, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days. I mean, that blessing ends up being in, in Millerite history. It's, it's going to be coming to the first day of the first month. So in a sense, we're kind of working backwards, but we'll say in our history, this relates to November 9th, 2019 as a symbol. We can, uh, we can also you... say what we can also say to 9-11. What's that? You count back from the first day of the first month in 1844, 1290 days that takes you to uh, the seventh day of the tenth month in the Gregorian calendar, or the tenth day of the seventh month in, I can't see, that's the biblical calendar in 1840. Okay, so, um, so, so you're from, saying. Yeah, so from the seventh of October, 1840. It's 1290 days. So that 7th of October could maybe tie in with, because we had that 7th of October attack in um, last year. So I don't know how many years that is. So we go back to 1840? 
Yeah, I just I done a thing about uh, the number of days. So twelve hundred ninety days from from August eleventh. No, no, from the seventh of uh, October. Oh, okay, so from the tenth day of or the um, which is the tenth, which is the tenth day of the seventh month from the biblical calendar. So it's like a a switch. Yeah, it, yeah. So it yeah it it ties together into a knot. Okay. So we go from 1840 and we count 1290. And that brings us to the first day of the first month. Okay, so yes. that, that's interesting to me. Um, and if you, go, if you go from the 11th of August in the Julian calendar. Okay, what year? 1840. Okay, and we go August what? The 11th of August in the Julian. The which of August? The 11th. Okay, August 11th, 1840. Okay, but on the Julian calendar. Yeah. Yes, and count 1335. Okay, that also brings us to April 19th. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so I want to make a note of that. So so what we're seeing, we, we asked a, a, a simple question, why? That's like the question two years olds ask. But we're getting lots of answers, right, that these things relate to the past. And they relate to the symbols that we are looking at here. So that that symbol of the first day of the first month. So I'm going to put this as a footnote. So we go back from April 19th, the first day of the first month in 1844. 1290 days, it goes to the 10th day of the seventh month biblical and uh, the seventh month, 10th day or no. Seventh day, 10th month. Tenth month, seventh day, Gregorian, and 1,335 days back from April 19th, 1844, is August 11th, 1840, Julian. And if you go back 1260, it takes you to the 11th of November, Julian. Which is the eleventh day of the eighth month. Biblical. So twelve sixty days back from April nineteenth, eighteen forty four, goes to which date? November eleventh. Sorry, uh, it's actually eleventh day, ninth month. So what would be eleventh September? Is oh, it? Oh, oh. No, hold on. Wouldn't be right. Wouldn't be right. I've got a movie wrong here. No. Um, just just check it out there. I don't know. <laughs> is it is it is it um okay, so let me just go back here. So we go eight, you're gonna go minus twelve sixty. Yeah, it's gonna bring us to the eleventh day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar, November sixth. November sixth. And the yeah. okay, what's that in the Julian? Um October twenty fifth. But it's the eleventh day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar in eighteen forty. Right, okay. I have the uh, Julian date wrong. Yeah, so what we connect is we're connecting the first day of the first month, which we have as a symbol for 9-11 and 11-9. And, and we can count back from the first day of the first month in 1844. 1844. We can go back uh, using the 1290. It's going to give us the 10th day of the seventh month in this little knot, right, between uh, the biblical and the Gregorian date, similar to what we have. Well, it's exactly the same as what we have in uh, the date for the dedication of the second temple, where you have the 12th day of the third month and the third day of the 12th month. And then we have, uh, going back 1335 days, it's going to bring us to August 11th, 1840. So all of them are bringing us back to 1840. And if we go 12, 16 days back, it brings us to the biblical date of the 11th day of the eighth month. So you have there, in the first day of the first month, you have the, the 1335 coming to an end. Right. Yeah. So and the 1335 then, comes to an end. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have 187 days to October 22nd. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. you go back from, from 508 to sort of like mirror that. You have 187 years to 321 on the Sunday law of Constantine. Okay, so that connects us to the, yeah, and we've done that before. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I'll put that in this footnote. I mean, because that's something that, that we know about 
we've done in other places. But this yeah. one, I don't oh. Really oh, well, hold on. I just, I just recognized something that uh, I thought it was Julian calendar. It's, it's actually the Islamic calendar. Is the 11th day, ninth month in the uh, 1840. So that's the 26th okay. day. So that would be the uh, 11th day, 8th month biblical calendar. It's the 11th day, ninth month in the Islamic yeah. calendar. 11th day, ninth month. And, and that's going to be Islamic. Okay, right? That's what you wanted? Yes. Okay. Brother Theodore. Yeah. Here's one of my famous famous questions again. On December the 25th, 2021, did, there was the anniversary of the bombing in Nashville, right? Yeah. But the, the bombing actually happened in 2020, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it was significant. So we had the December 25th date being 187 days from the publishing of the article, The Warning in the Tennessean. Okay. Uh, which was considered when we published the article or anything. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I just wanted to clear that up in yeah. my head. Yeah, so we had these anniversaries. So so we have lots of December 25th. And, uh, you know, you got, uh, was it Charlemagne, who's, you know, on December 25th that he's made emperor, the Holy Roman, Roman Empire. We got the baptism of Clovis. There's some other December 25th I can't think of offhand. You know, I baptized December 25th. And then we have it in our lines uh, with, uh, obviously, 1991, uh, the bombing of Nashville, and then uh, the end of the 777 structure. So, I mean, we know we have all these wheels within wheels. We have all these different things that connect. But, but just asking a simple question, and, and that to me is, is really what's important here. Because sometimes, you know, we, we just skip over things. We don't really ask a question, right? We just sort of take for granted. We have this 1335 and this 1290. But you can see when we start looking at them, that, that these again are, are powerful symbols that God has used, just like the 1260 and the 2520 and the 187. And they're all tied together. And they're tied together through these dates and symbols of events. And then some of them are just dates that are symbols. We don't have specific events, though they're tied to a specific event that, that is attached to that symbol in 1840. Right. So you got August 11th, you got, you know, 811 and 911 tied together uh, with the Islamic calendar and the rabbinic calendar counting when you count. That was the 1260 back. You got the 1290 back. You count back from the first day of the first month. You're going to get um, the other symbol, whatever. <laughs> I can't remember. Right? So you just get all of these symbols. They're all significant. And this is not likely. Right? Yeah. I was. He also, uh, Stephen just brought up something that 252 years of Enoch and his son with Methuselah. Was a hundred years. That wasn't Stephen. It wasn't Stephen. I'm sorry. I thought they were Stephen. I'm apologize. <laughs> so I just had, I added I just added a, a diagram that uh, we were discussing onto the chat. Maybe you get mixed up. Yeah, but that was uh, yeah Daniel uh, Mudidi, however you say his name. He he put that, which is something we already know. And then I you know we also have the sixty five years symbolized there. So that, that was on WhatsApp, right? Enoch was 252 years old when he had his son Methuselah was 187. Both the 252 and the 187 are connected to a 777 structure with the representation of the 2520. So I see course, the chart now, Stephen. I apologize. I was looking at a, uh, another one there. Yeah, okay. so this, yeah, so this is the chart that you're talking about. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, so what? Well, so we got, you know, the 1335 years, the 1335 days, the 30 years, the 187 years, the 1260. So you can see the 1290 in there. So that ties those symbols together, right? What we've been talking about. And then you get the 30 days, the 1260 days, and the 187 days. Now we get this 1477 um, years. You know, so one of the things, you know, about that number, it, it is a symbol because uh, 147 
So if you just take the number 147 by itself, that's seven times seven times three, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there's, there's a symbol there, but also 147 times seven is 21 or part, or, right? So you could look at it that way. So it relates to the 21 days of Daniel and then 1477 is 211 and that relates to Stephen's birthday. February 11th, so it's the 21, and then the 11, right? So the 21 and the 1. So yeah, there's lots, lots of symbols in here dealing with this 1335, you know, to the symbol of August 11th, and that first day, the first month symbol, and then to the 10th day of the seventh month, right? The 187 years and the 187 days. So, and we understand October 22nd, 1844 represents the Sunday law. It's a symbol of the Sunday law, and. Okay. Okay. So there's probably more things that we could find that, that connect these things together, but we have lots of symbols now that, that tie these histories together. And then it says, but go thy way till the end, right? The case. Now you're going to have there, uh, go thou thy way. So we, we have some, some Hebrew numbers that we've, We've looked at many different times before. So, for instance, um, we've been talking about the 1335, but we also have in there the 18 or the 1533 in the sense that uh, what's going to say that go thou thy way, that number there, H859, is related to uh, the octal. So the octal of 1533. So 859, the octal of that is 1533, so something you know, we've looked at before. And, uh, and now we got 1980 as another symbol. Now, 1980, of course, that's going to be August 11th, 1980. That's the day I'm converted, right? So it ties us. What I'm saying is that 1980 ties us to August 11th as a symbol, because that symbol we attach to 1980 because of my birthday. Or my birthday, my conversion, right? So my conversion in 1980. So my birthday, August 11th. I'd be a lot younger. I'd be 17 years younger if that was the case. So August 11th, 1980, and tied to the 1533 with that number 859. Um, I'm just gonna, and, and, and 1980 is just the, the word to go, right? So you got to go, go, um, and it's a very, very common word. It's translated as went and go, walked, and then the other one, 589, just you go, right? So you go, go thou thy way, till the end be, right? So we have this case, so it's a different end. There's different ends that are used. And thou shalt rest. Um, now, this is the word nuach, kind of rhymes with ruach. And that's going to be first mentioned in Genesis 8, verse 4, when the ark rested on the mountain of Ararat. So Genesis 8, 4 as a symbol, it's, um, you know, 84, right? And it's going to rest on the seventh month in the 17th day of the month. So we got the ark resting in the seventh month. So you got the seven symbol there. And then the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ararat. And Ararat is the Hebrew number is here. I'll show you what I'm looking at. So, so this word rested, go that way, rest, right? So we got, look up this word rested or rest, 5117, uh, that is to rest, settle down, right? And it's going to bring us, so this is the law of first mention. As far as I can see, that's the first time it's mentioned. All right, so I've looked here quickly, but yeah, so it's going to be Genesis 8, verse 4. So it's going to give us this symbol of the seventh month, the 17th day of the month, and then Ararat. And so 780 as a symbol, 780 days is 18,720 hours. So Ararat as a symbol with the Hebrew number relates to July 18, 2020. Okay, can we see that? So Ararat itself is the symbol of July 18, 2020. Any comments on that? Everybody agrees that that makes sense? 
you know, run by that one more time, how you got um, July 18th. Okay. The Hebrew number for Ararat is 780. All right. We take that as days, and we take the number of hours in 780 days. It's 18,720, the 18th of July, 2020. The main symbol we have for July 18, 2020. That's pretty awesome, right? right? Yeah. Yep. And, and, and we can see that, that, that this is Daniel going his way and resting, right? And we look at the word that rest, you rest, and thou shalt stand in thy lot at the end of days, right? And so we can take that word rest. We look at the first time it's mentioned. It's called the law first mentioned. And we see it's going to be in connection with the ark resting upon Mount Ararat. And we can see that the Hebrew number for Ararat is 780. And so this, this in our time is going to relate to this message of July 18, 2020. Now, in Millerite history, the historical application of that verse is going to uh, relate to, obviously, the book of Daniel being opened in Millerite history. Uh, so, so the ends there are relating to, uh, addressing the ends of the prophetic period. But this word rest ties us to the ark of Noah, Noah's ark, resting on the mountains of Ararat. And that's going to then relate in our history to July 18, 2020. So in Millerite history, he's going to stand in his lot at the end of the days. We would say the end of the days um, are October 22, 1844. But that's going to relate to July 18, uh, 2020, through this idea of rest. So if we take this word rest, I guess I'll just do it as a footnote. So uh, just going back again. Yeah. To uh, the, the year 1290. Okay. So I, I added an hour diagram to the chat. So it was actually 2520 hours. Uh, was the okay. edict of expulsion. So basically the Jews had to leave by All Saints Day, which was November the 1st. So 105 days. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That ma that makes more sense. So if we go to uh, this here, so I'm just I'm going to put this as a footnote to this. The Jews were given until what was the date? November. November the first, All Saints Day. Or is that no? November the first is is that the maybe it's the 31st of October. Ah, right. Yes, that's what I remember. October 31st and a period of 105 days. Now, of course, that's the 10th day of the fifth month relating to the destruction of the temple, right? Mm -hmm. These all things all intertwine with each other for 25, 20 hours. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so some... Some very powerful symbols there. So the year 1290 is 969 years from the Sunday law of Constantine in 321. Yeah, um, we, so marked, we have marked 187 years beginning there to 508. So that mm -hmm. sort of connects with Methuselah being born, um, being 187 years old when Methuselah, sorry, when Lambic is born. And then he goes yeah. on to the to the flood, 969 years. Okay. Yeah, so we get Methuselah in there as well with the 1290, 321, and uh, 600, 969 years. And the 187. So you got uh, the 187 from, so that's going to be from, so where are you counting that? Like, okay, I'm trying to remember how that goes. Where's the, were you counting the, the 777 or one, you said 187? What were you doing with that? Yeah, so 187 years from Constantine, the law, Sunday law, is 508. But also, oh, okay. it's 969 years to 1290. Yeah, so you got first the 777, then you have 321 AD, then you have 187 years to 508, mm -hmm. and then you have the 1290, and then the 600 and or 969 years are where? From the Sunday law to 1290. Oh, to 12, the year 1290 itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So 
again, these are like wheels within wheels. They they tie all of these these things together. And um, so so in Daniel being told that he shall, you know, rest. I mean, we're going to relate that to these symbols of our history. So he's going to stand in his lot at the end of the days, and that's going to bring us uh, to July 18, 2020 as a symbol. So, I mean, some of these other symbols we used as well. I'm just looking at some loose ends here. Hey, Theodore, you know that on December the 25th, 2021, they shit, they sent up a space rocket with the telescope on it. Yeah, I know. The James Webb. On that day, too. On that day. I just did, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is interesting. I, I try to figure out what the connection would be. What's that date again? December 25th, 20, it's not 2021. It's, oh. um, I gotcha. December twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, isn't it? Or or twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be one year anniversary of December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. But yeah, it is on December twenty fifth that they send up the James Webb. But I am not sure if what, what the connection would be, you know, as a symbol, what the telescope would represent. I mean, other than, you know, it represents uh you know, astronomy in some way, which is related to time. Well, I messed up. I thought it was, I thought it was 2021 that they send it up. I thought it was 2022, but, um, you, well, you're right. It is December 25th, 2021. Yeah. I thought it was December 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Time flies. Wow. Yeah. I'm thinking about more. Yeah. I don't know why I thought it was 2022. Okay, so it is 2021, December 25th. So, so that date's significant. <laughs> but yeah, what's the significance of them sending up the JWST on that date? I don't know. I don't know either. I just thought it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Our, our reckon man's attempt to try to get off this planet already. <laughs> Not to do with getting off the planet. But anyway. Okay, so definitely lots of things that we have seen uh, today as we gone through this this study i don't know if there's any loose ends we need to tie up here now so for the next two days um you guys are going to continue without me but i expect some kind of review or connection with this in a completely different way than i do it right so that some insights so obviously i have a certain way in which my mind works but uh we can see that this the that there is more in this than we ever would have imagined. Okay. Yeah, like an on, like an onion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty amazing. You know, just I mean, God's amazing uh, that you know He could uh, pull all of these different things together, all these different dates, and that somebody could say, "Well, it's just random." It, it definitely is not, right? It's just. It's just I can't, can't. Yeah, it can't be random. No. Okay, so uh, well, let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the study today, and I pray, Lord, that uh, you can be with each person and that you can be with these studies throughout this week, even when I'm not here. I pray that you can keep me safe and guide me to my destination and that uh, your spirit can go before me, your angels go before me to work upon the hearts of the individuals that I come in contact with. I pray, Lord, that uh, you can use me to your glory. Thank you for all things that you do. And we entrust all things to you. And we know that you have foreseen everything. And we are amazed at how you work and how you speak to us. So continue to bless everyone, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.